Hello and welcome to blog number 67, me learning to play the melodeon. I guess it's fair to say that I came pretty late to the party uh, as far as the melodeon is concerned. I was 58 when I started playing and I went from being a fairly decent professional guitarist overnight to being a really terrible melodeon player. Um, and the story of how I got into the melodeon has been documented elsewhere on this channel so I won't bore you stiff with that. But one name that very quickly cropped up an awful lot when I first started learning to play the Melodeon was Anna Hatter. And um, I saw his name in conjunction with uh, a particular layout on the Melodeon called the Anna Hatter layout. And so I became fascinated um, by this layout and I did some research and ended up going to see him play. I've seen him a couple of times. He's a really, really tidy player, incredibly musical gets a lovely sound and uh, he's a complete musician all round. He also plays uh, the cello I think and he's not too shabby on the concertina either so um, yeah he's a really good guy, lovely chap and uh, apparently a few years back when he got his Oakwood um, Melodeon he decided he wanted a new layout, something different from the, the normal uh, layout or normal layouts that were available at the time. We came up with this particular layout which has been uh, dubbed the Anna Hatter layout. He's very modest and says that um, Theo Gibb, who's one of the administrators of uh, Melodian.net, might have thought of it before. Uh, others may have come up with it before, but across the world of the Melodian, uh, this layout is known as the Anna Hatter layout. And one of my students said, could I you know, do a, a blog about this and what it involves and so I said, yes, of course I will, and I've done some research, so um, this is it. Let's just start off with uh, a normal third button start uh, with accidentals layout. That's what this Dino Buffetti Vinci Melodian is, just so we know where we're, we're going here. So this is third button start. If you don't know what that means, it means the third button down on each row uh, is the root note of that row. So if I press the third button down on the G row and push the bellows towards the closed position, that is the note G. That is the root note of the, the G row. And likewise, if I do the same thing on the D row, press the third button down and push the bellows, that's a D, the root note of the, the D row. And these buttons up here, are uh, buttons that give us notes that are not found in either the scale of G major or the scale of D major. And I'm going to uh, publish um, my findings along with this video so you'll be able to download all this from my website. Uh, on this button here we have an F and an E flat. And on this button we have a G sharp and a B flat. Or an A flat and a B flat if you like. And the buttons between those accidental buttons and the uh, root notes, button two in other words. On the G row we have D on the push, that's obviously part of a G major chord. It's actually an octave below that D. That's on the push and on the pull we have F sharp. So it's a big jump up, jumps up a major third. That's a semitone below the root note G. And likewise on the D row, this second button down, if I push it, it gives me A, which is quite a big uh, jump down from the D, isn't it? And if I pull it, it gives me C sharp. So a major third above, and the C sharp is the seventh of the scale of D leading to the D. So, you know, they're, they're equivalent, aren't they? And and right down the other end, the knee end, we have these very high notes, B and F sharp, very high isn't it? And A and E uh, on the D row, pretty unpleasant. Uh, there is an advantage to having this particular layout, and that is that you can stretch the accidentals. If I'm playing... Something like Drunken Sailor, I can reach that accidental very easily. Other than that, uh, you have to say there's not much uh, to recommend this particular layout, although uh, most people have this layout on their Melodium by default. Now the layouts I'm going to cover in this blog 
it's not everything you can get and there's all kinds of permutations but these are the, the three uh, big ones three most popular if you like the next one I'm going to deal with is the third button start with low notes now this is essentially the same as the one I've just shown you but instead of having these accidentals we have um, low notes we have a continuation of the scale I haven't got a melodeon that's got this so you'll just have to imagine this we've still got D and F sharp and A and C sharp but on this row on the D row we've got F sharp and A so F sharp on the push A on the pull and on the G row we have B on the push and D on the pull so B, B on the push is part of your G major chord so you'll be able to go B D G you'll have a major triad there and on the D row you've got F sharp a and D, so imagine an F sharp um, underneath that, you've got a low F sharp. So on the pull you've got a D, so if I was to press this button and pull out I'd have the D which sounds the same as this D on the push, and likewise here if I was to pull out I'd have an A uh, which is um, the equivalent of this A on the push, and I've still got my horribly squeaky high notes at the knee end. So what's the advantage of having low notes uh, rather than accidentals? Well, you can get a full low D major chord on the D row. You get the low F sharp, which is not available on the layout I'm going to deal with next, which is the Anahata layout. You don't have that. So the F sharp is exclusive to this layout. Uh, on the chart that I've provided here, uh, I've put these notes in red because these are the notes you can tune to get the Anahata layout. Okay, and we'll deal with that in a moment. Um, a big disadvantage of this layout is, of course, you lose your accidentals, and they can be pretty useful, those accidental notes, to give you those notes that you don't get in either the key of G major or D major. But it is really nice to be able to go right, right the way down uh, through the, the, the scale of both the keys of G and D. Um, has to be said, in my experience, which is fairly limited still, even after six and a half years, uh, melodians with low notes are a lot rarer than uh, melodians with accidentals, but you know they do exist. By the way, if you look at these um, notes, uh, they're showing the first few buttons uh, the chin end, and then I miss out the bit in the middle and I jump straight to the knee end. And the first letter is the note you get on the push, and the one to the right is what you get on the pull, and the tiny numbers refer to the note numbers where uh, C4 is middle C, um, middle C on the piano, okay? Um, okay, so let's jump to our Anahata layout, and that's really the point of this blog. Now, generally, the Anahata layout um, is a fourth button start can be a third button start as well I'll deal with that in a minute and it gives you a low G scale with accidentals and like I said it's also possible as a third button start but without accidentals uh, what I've written here is the with accidentals so let's just understand what we mean by a fourth button start so pretty obviously uh, this isn't in the Anahata layout so I'm going to need to change melodians yeah, so this is a Castanari Lily. It's a single reed instrument, meaning that for each note there's only one reed. But I, I use this extensively in my teaching and in my working out. It's beautifully light, only weighs about four pounds, and it's a really lovely little instrument. It's about 20 years old, and I really love this, uh, this melodion. And it is laid out in that Anahata uh, fourth button start low G scale. Um, so, fourth button start, what does that mean? Well, it means that the fourth button down from the chin end, if I press the button, push the bellows towards the closed position, that's the root note of the row. So that's a note of G. And if I do the same thing on the D row, press the fourth button down from the chin end, press the bellows towards the closed position, that's the note D, the root note of my... D major scale on my D row. So that's what we mean by fourth button start. And you can get fourth button start without having an Anahata layout. I mean, you can have uh, low notes and accidentals and a fourth button start. I haven't dealt with that here, but you know, it's, and that's another possibility. 
So what have I got here? Well, on the first buttons of the rows, I've still got my accidentals. Uh, but I've got some new notes on this second button down. It's like we've added uh, a button on this row here and here, and we've moved everything else down. So what have we got? Well, on the G row, on the push, we've got B, and we've got C on the pull. And on the D row, on button two, we've got G on the push, and A on the pull. So you might ask, well, what is the point of all this? And the answer is this. You've got some major advantages with this setup. You can play a complete low G scale, albeit cross row. So if I play this G note, it's on the push on the D row, just like this G note, which is on the push on the G row. So if I go G, push, play the same button, pull out, A, that's the next button in the scale, go over to the G row, button two, push to get the B, pull to get the C, then I go to the third button on the G row, push to get the D, and then I go to the fourth button of the D row, pull to get the E, return to the third button of the G row to get the F sharp on the pull, and then I go finally to the fourth button of the G row to play the G an octave higher than the one that I started on. So we have our complete scale of G major. And that is really useful, and I'll, I'll show you later on how I can play a tune just using those notes. We also get uh, an extension of the D major scale descending. So there's our D, fourth button on the D row. And if I come to the button above and pull out and get the C sharp, that's the note below in the scale. Then I go over to the uh, G row, second button, and push to get the B. And then come back to the D row, second button, pull to get the A, and push to get the G. I've got... One, two, three, four, five notes of the D major scale uh, descending, or if you like, five notes ascending. So that could be useful, couldn't it, if you're playing in the key of D major. Exclusive to this layout is you get this C on the pull, which is um, an octave below this C, which is on the pull. So it still works with all your chords that work with C on the pull. You also get a low G on the D row on the push, which is exclusive to this layout. And that's an octave below, like I said, that G on the push on the G row. Now this BC setup is an exact octave below that one. So you know it won't mess your basses up if you're used to playing basses with this um, BC setup. Another big thing, if you're an English folk musician, is this G note here, this low G, is the same as the lowest note of the violin. So it matches uh, the scale of many English traditional tunes uh, that use that note, but they don't need that missing F sharp. You haven't got the F sharp that you've got uh, in the low note layout, but I don't think you're really going to miss it. So there are lots of advantages of having uh, this set up. So are there any disadvantages? Well, if you want to use the accidentals, sometimes it's, it's a bit of a stretch. There's obviously an extra button to stretch. So for instance, my Drunken Sailor riff. Is an extra stretch. I've got very long fingers, not too bad for me. But if you've got shorter fingers, you might struggle with that. Uh, there's no low D triad on the D row. What do I mean by that? Well. On um, a melodeon that's got low notes, uh, you've got D, A, and then you'll have uh, an F sharp note there. But you've got you've got that note of G, which is kind of a D sus four, but not very melodic down that end. So that is something you do lose. But I must admit, I don't tend to uh, play. Um, a lot of right hand chords, so it's not a problem for me. So in other words, you've lost that low F sharp. Uh, but you've gained that nice G, which is just so useful. Um, having said all this about the Anahata layout, um, I use the other box I was playing for my Morris playing because I haven't come across anything yet where I've needed uh, that layout, just the standard third button start, 
uh, with accidentals has been perfect so far and I've been playing uh, for the Chelmsford Morris side for over a year so you know so far no problems in that respect. I should also say that Anna Hatter used to play for Chelmsford Morris many years ago so uh, I'm kind of following in his illustrious footsteps but uh, sadly at the age of 64 it's unlikely I'll ever be as good as him but um, you know he really has been a uh, an inspiration to me, along with quite a few other players. So if you're contemplating changing to an Anna Hatter layout, this fourth button start with a low G scale, what is involved? Well, you could just go out and buy one. There are quite a few available these days. Uh, lots of them come from the factory set up in that way, or you can specify that if you're ordering a brand new instrument. But if you want your local Melodium Fettler uh, to uh, change your third button start instrument uh, to an Anna Hatter layout, uh, this is what's involved. If you've got a melodeon that's got low notes, it's not too bad, the change. You simply need to get the D on the G row tuned up one tone to a C, and the F sharp on the D row tuned up one semitone to a G. Uh, and then, you know, you're good to go. You've got your Anna Hatter layout, and the cost of that is, at the time of doing this video, I would estimate, I could be wrong, don't quote me on this, but I would think about £50. Pounds. Um... The more likely scenario is that you'll have a third button start with accidentals and you want to change that to the Anna Hatter fourth button start. That can work out pretty expensive, so let me tell you why. Um, so for a start, all the reeds from button two onwards have got to be moved south by one position. Okay, So you'll actually end up losing the notes that these um, bottom two buttons provide, which is really not a tragedy in any way. They're, they're horribly high and squeaky and I don't think I've ever played them. Uh, and obviously, because you've got two new buttons, as it were, with four notes between them, that means uh, that your fettler will have to uh, buy in or access some new reeds. If you've got a, a two-voice instrument, that's two reeds per note, that's eight new reeds. If you've got a three-voice instrument, that's three reeds per note, so that's 12 new reeds. You'll see the, the cost is beginning to mount up. And if you add that to the moving of all the reeds uh, from one position to the next one down. Uh, plus, also, while your fettler's doing that, what I would do is get them to tune it to a dedic tuning. Now, you can't tune a single voice instrument like this to dedic tuning because the idea is that instead of one reed being tuned to concert pitch and the other one tuned a bit higher, uh, dedic tuning, the two reeds kind of straddle concert pitch uh, and the thirds in the major chords over on this side, those are um, detuned slightly. Don't ask me why, I don't understand how it works, but it does. Martin White is my particular uh, choice of Fetler. Uh, a, he's very good, and B, he lives about 20 minutes up the road from me, so I'm, I'm very, very lucky. There are plenty of other Fetlers around the UK. Um, I can think of Theo Gibb and Lester Bailey, and oh, there's quite a few others as well. So, um, you know, check those out and ask their opinion and get a quote from them, obviously, before they do the work. So what is it going to cost for you to change your third button start with accidentals instrument into an Anna Hatter fourth uh, a button start instrument? And the answer is probably somewhere between 100 and 200 pounds. Uh, so if you're having uh, all the reeds moved down, uh, so let's say you've got a three voice instrument, um, you know, that's probably going to be nearer £200. Um, might be a bit less if you've only got a two-voice instrument. So you'll have to work out whether it's worth your while. But, I mean, for me, I'm really glad I've got this. I was doing a tune the other day called uh, uh, Stop the Cavalry, Jonah Louis Christmas classic, and there was a bit in that where I needed that low C, and I couldn't have done that on a third button start with accidentals. Let me just give you a practical example of... Uh, how useful it is to have this setup. Uh, we all know Speed the Plough, it's probably one of the first tunes I ever played, and most people on a, on a DG play it sort of. Um... at that pitch. But with this setup, it is possible to play an octave lower, like this. <laughs>
cool, isn't it? Pretty great to be able to play that tune that you've known uh, only at one pitch, be able to play it an octave lower uh, without having to get an instrument uh, with a lower set of reeds and switch to that. So um, anyway, that's just about it. There's quite a lot of information in this blog in researching for this blog. I must admit that I uh, certainly learned a lot myself. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, thank you very much for watching this blog. If you liked it, please um, subscribe to my channel, press the like button, and if you click the bell icon, uh, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. I have lots of Melodian lessons on my website, and the address is on your screen now. At the time of doing this video, it's the 5th of December, so I've got lots of new Christmas lessons that I've put up there, so check those out. And like I say, very many thanks for watching.